Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition, and if you've just had your sex fix from Netflix, then this is the video for you. Throughout it, we're going to be discussing 365 DNI, and I won't even DNI that this is going to be my worst video ever. The Polish film is about polishing knobs, but it also comes with an ending that leaves a lot to talk about. So sit back, grab your lotion, because we're going in deep on what we think happens and how it could set up a potential sequel. Obviously there will be heavy spoilers here, so if you don't want anything ruined, then now's the time to use your safe word and get out of the video whilst you still can. If you're still wanting to get into it, then give us a thumbs up to go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel for videos like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into 365 days. Okay, so 365 Days follows Massimo Taglatelli, the leader of the Torricelli Mafia group. When Massimo isn't getting brain on a plane, he's on a boat like T-Pain, and this movie is very much one for the lovers of lockdown. It's one of those rare films that comes along once in a generation that makes you teach yourself how to clear your watch history on Netflix, and if you share a family plan then chances are you're going to be getting some funny looks around the dinner table come Christmas. Oh shut up Maureen, you watched it too. Massimo is very much a man that is obsessed with women, and no more is this shown in the opening when he spies on one wandering along the beach through binoculars. Yeah, he's literally stood there watching a woman with binoculars on. Though this should come as something he regrets, as his father is killed due to it, he obsesses over the woman that caught his eyes and led to his daddy's demise, which leads to an interesting, uh, an interesting story I will say. Now eventually he catches up with this woman, who we learn is called Laura, and we watch as this live action adaptation of Beauty and the Beast tells us that all you have to do to get a woman to love you is take away all of her options and leave her with absolutely no choice in the matter whatsoever. Yay, love! Massimo tells her that he will keep her as a prisoner for an entire year until she falls in love with him, and he ruins her relationship, threatens her family, and makes her his slave. I'll, I'll admit, it's, it's a bold strategy, not one I've, I'd open with, but I've seen worse. He tells her that he won't touch her without her consent, but after just one week she caves in and gains full Stockholm Syndrome. So yeah, set feminism back to the dark ages, and I'm surprised Emma Watson wasn't up for starring in this. Massimo plays all the moves that you wouldn't expect, but they seem to work for him really, really well. He hooks up with a woman in front of her, are you in love yet? Slaps her, are you in love yet? And takes her to a club as the two star-crossed lovers slowly fall for one another. Here she's groped by another Mafia member, which leads to Massimo killing him. Hey, no one gropes my objects other than me. This causes a Mafia war between the two families that has massive repercussions for the end. Though Super Mario tells Massimo to ditch the witch, he refuses to, leading to a big cliffhanger. I almost called her a B word there, but thought, Best not, as there's been enough objectification going on in this video. Actually, actually, that reminds me, I must remember to let my wife out her cage today. Now this probably is one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but it's also one that I couldn't really stop watching. The entire thing is all over the place, whether it's the constant language changes, the character motivations switching without making sense, or just the general wooden acting, it's completely terrible, and amazing at the same time. The script makes Fifty Shades of Grey look like Ulysses, and Massimo makes Anakin Skywalker look like he's got the same way with ladies as James Bond does. Never before has there been someone who's done it so wrong, but somehow ended up doing it so right. But he's so hot though. It's a weird film, and I've got no doubt that some single man that was trapped in his basement for the majority of lockdown is contemplating suing Netflix because somehow they stole the entire storyline from his imagination during one of his darkest days. It really is that bad. Obviously, Massimo can't be the bad guy for the entire thing, and they do have to find a convoluted way to make the two actually like each other, no matter how many pictures of himself he has hanging up. Don't worry brunettes, it makes blondes look stupid too. They're all about equality here. At one point in the film, Laura almost ends up drowning, and Massimo saves her, which of course leads to him drowning in pussy. I told you it was the worst video I've ever made. I actually love the Wikipedia description for the setup to this scene, as it just says, When she wakes up, he admits he was scared she might not make it, and doesn't want to lose her. They then, they then spend hours having sex. 
thank God no other films are probably going to be at the Oscars this year because they'd lose to this anyway. Massimo slowly loses his grip on Laura and he allows her to go visit a family whilst he sorts out the business back home. After hearing nothing from him, she goes clubbing with her friend Olga and runs into her ex Martin who follows her back to her home where Massimo is waiting around like Batman. Martin, realising you can't fight the Dark Knight, leaves and Laura initially, angry at Massimo, forgives him after seeing the wounds from the Mafia War. Oh, you, you were just killing people, that's so sweet. The next morning, Massimo proposes and Laura says yes because who wouldn't want to marry a man that keeps women captive against their will? She also finds out that she's pregnant and with her friend Olga goes to try on wedding dresses without Massimo. The film ends with Luigi finding out that due to the fallout from their gang war that Laura has been marked for death. Mario goes to Massimo but it's too late to warn Laura as Massimo loses phone signal with her as she enters a tunnel. Maybe none of this would have happened if you'd not let Massimo enter your tunnel, am I right? Now there are a lot of implications over this with the main one being that Olga, Laura and the pair's unborn child have been killed. However, due to the speed that the police show up and lock the area down, I doubt that this would have happened as the Mafia would need to get out of there quicker than Laura should have got out of Massimo's house when she had the chance. Instead, I actually believe that she's been kidnapped by the group and will be held hostage. The final shot of the film lingers on a boat for a very long time, so it is possible that this is where she's now being held. 365 Deny is actually based on a book by Blanka Lipinska that is the first of a trilogy, just in case you didn't think it could rip off Fifty Shades any more than it does. The second book, Ten Dizen, which translates as This Day and are definitely pronounced wrong, has Laura taken by the Mafia rivals and we actually learn that Massimo has a twin brother called Adriano. Adriano was not in the first film as he studied in Britain and lived there for the events of the first book and Olga starts a relationship with him but you can probably guess that they swap to see if anyone notices. Absolute weirdos I tell you. But he's so hot though. During her kidnapping, Laura falls for the new people that have taken her captive, most notably a man called Nacho, who she too gains Stockholm Syndrome for. Hey Massimo, what you call a girl that isn't yours? Nacho girl, I got him. Come on, that, is, that does deserve a thumbs up. Now Massimo eventually manages to get her back, but this causes a gang war between the two dons that makes everything escalate further. Also, Laura's heart is torn between these two complete and utter psychopaths, so you know, it really makes for an interesting dynamic. Now the events of the first book are slightly different from this film, with some things happening at different times and them ending slightly differently. I don't think that the book ends on the cliffhanger, but I don't know if that's true as I've not read it, but I did read about it on Wikipedia, which is the same, so yeah, we do, we do know it does change a bit. I'm guessing that because of this they will likely follow the framework of the second book, but there is a possibility that they will change things up. I would hope that they ditch the twin brother thing, but hey, it's not exactly like this film is trying to do something new, but yeah, keep your eyes out. Now before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to let you know we're giving away a free copy of the MCU Infinity Saga to one random subscriber. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on the movie in the comments section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of July and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. Okay, so what did I think of the film overall? This is low-key just like something you would get on the hub, except the story's not as good and I don't think the acting is quite as good either. There are obviously a lot of things wrong with the movie in terms of the way that it portrays women and so on, but Twitter doesn't seem to be complaining, which is weird because that, that's the platform that got mad because Sean Connery slapped a woman on the bum in Goldfinger about 60 years ago. Now, the movie is terrible, 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 but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't watch it. Obviously, you're going to have to make sure your parents are not only in the room, but you, you should probably wait until they're five miles away and also make sure you smash up your TV after it so that, so that no one sees that you ever watch this thing. 365 days probably deserves a 1 out of 10 and also a 10 out of 10 at the same time because it was the worst film I've seen in forever but it's also one that you just have to watch. I have no idea what's going on anymore but you watch this film, obviously if you're over 18, 
don't want anyone blaming me for ruining their childhood, but yeah, just what a what a strange film. But here's to the sequel. Now, obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the film and what you think happened at the end. Comment below and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, then please drop a thumbs up and make sure you check out our breakdown of *The Five Bloods*, which is going to be linked at the end. It's not it's not as intellectual as this review, but you should have fun with it. And if you want to support the channel from as little as 99 cents a month, then please click the join button below. We massively appreciate it, and as a thank you, you get access to content early. If you want to come chat to us after the show, either follow us at Heavy Spoilers, or click the Discord link in the description below. Huge thank you for sticking with me till the end. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.